Welcome to Shaping E-Commerce with Iron Plane. This is where we talk about e-commerce development, solutions, digital marketing, and all things e-commerce. Be sure to check out the description below each video to find additional resource links and show notes. We upload new videos each day. Please like and subscribe to our channel. In this episode of our e-commerce tech series, our team discusses UX design. They offer key insights into the UX design phase when generating new concepts and developing customer journey maps to improve the user experience on e-commerce websites. In our last session, we talked about the research phase of our UX projects. And in this session, we're gonna be talking about the design phase. So um, as we described in our introduction, the three key phases are research, design, and implementation. And so right now we'll focus on design. So if we kind of assume that the scenario is that we've got an e-commerce business who has recently been struggling with their existing website um, to, um, you know, they have a good volume of visits every month, let's say, and um, they have seen their bounce rate increase, they've seen their conversion rates decrease, and they're not really sure what to do about it. Um, and just to kind of carry this forward, let's say we went through the research phase and we identified, you know, 10 activities uh, that we think will help um, influence the, uh, the, the goals that they have or to improve the, the KPIs that they have defined in their research phase. What's the next step in that type of project? And if I haven't laid it out correctly, let, you know, we can adjust it as, as we need to. Well, I mean, if you've identified what you can do, then design phase is over, I guess. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so design. No, I'm, just joking. I'm just joking. Okay. No, not really. Not really, not really. Design phase is really anything, what, if you create anything new, you've designed something basically. So it doesn't even have to be creating the final design or prototype. If you've created an idea, you've generated a new concept, you've created a user persona and user customer journey map. This is all design. You're, you're working, you're still working on designing the whole experience. I see. So, so I then then I didn't realize that like the persona crafting would be an element of the design. I assume that that and I maybe maybe it's just that there is a nice it's a bit of a mix with everything. Yeah, okay. Like they do overlap for sure. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So uh, in this case you described uh, I would add something more to our research uh, phase. I think in this case important will be user testing. Like, for example, um, if we can uh, analyze in which age group uh, this issue appear for uh, this bounce rate and um, card issue, then we can um, make some recruitment and invite these people to our office or make it online and prepare some task scenarios. So, uh, for example, we'll, we will prepare a scenario like please enter the site add some product to the cart and do checkout and we will observe this person and ask some additional questions which is individual in-depth interview and after that we can analyze these results uh, and see uh, what's the biggest issue from the user point of view not only from data point, point of view because some Sometimes something really small can affect user experience, like some weird pop-up or some uh, weird options, the delivery options. So I think this user testing is really important and it's, it's enough to test five people from the same target group. So it's not like really big investment. And after that, we can think what, how we can improve this uh, um, this design and experience. And for example, we can uh, design some new screen and also test this with users uh, to see if uh, this will be uh, a better experience or no. 
or uh, as I uh, described before, we can run A-B testing and um, test it on production. Like half of the users will, will have option A and half of them will have option B. And then we can just uh, compare uh, data and uh, pick the be uh, better one. So yes, just, I would, oh, go sorry. ahead, Jared. Oh, I just wanted to toss in real quick. I, I just really want to stress the importance of user testing because it's really easy for people who work on, on or you know, who own and manage a website to get it into their heads that they know how, you know, uh, people use their website and, you know, they use their website every day. So <laughs> they, they do the best, but the reality is, you know, they're using their website and their competitors' websites all the time. They're familiar with the flows you know, uh, a mechanic who's coming to their site to, you know, buy a gift for their family member isn't going to know, you know, necessarily how their site, uh, you know, how they're supposed to navigate through a site. So that user testing phase is huge. Yeah, that's true. And because we are thinking from our uh, mental models, like for us, it's easy to understand something and we know how uh, some page should behave. But for people uh, from older people or people that are not using websites so often, then it can be difficult. So it's really hard to uh, to be in uh, their skin. That's why we need user testing to have real opinion and real feedback. I think anyone who's helped an older relative or <laughs> older friend use something on their phone, you realize that, it, you know, nothing is obvious to everyone. So yeah, that's true. <clears throat> it's, yeah, and I, that's, that's yeah. a very good point um, because accessibility is a big topic these days mm -hmm. with the yeah. requirements in California, with the requirements in the EU and also um, some federal requirements um, in the US. Um, maybe touch on the role of the design phase in, in uh, accessibility. I would say this is, um, it's a, accessibility is very pervasive. I would say it covers a lot of design and also the front end development aspect of it. So for example, at our company, the themes we use and anything we, like before we even start, um, accessibility is covered from the get go. So we, we kind of design, uh, like we want it to be accessible from the moment we start working on it or designing it. So we don't say, oh, let's just design something and then we'll add accessibility at the end. It's something that's just deeply, it should be deeply ingrained in the process. So it's not even a, I wouldn't say it's, it's like, it is a conscious thought that we have to keep it accessible, but I would say it's just by default. Um, we believe the solutions have to be accessible. Um, and so I, I think of this in the context of the theme, the Magento theme that uh, Snowdog okay. created, the alpaca theme. And mm -hmm. I think I've heard of that as having been designed mobile first. So is it accurate to say it's mobile first and accessibility first? Would that be? Yeah, I would say we call it accessible by default. So. Ah, okay like from the beginning it's accessible and um so f luckily on a, a lot of projects we don't even have to think about it because we know our front end team is always think is you know consciously making uh, everything is accessible and our designers are also very w well aware of accessibility principles so um it's it's deeply ingrained in the process and um, you know tim also it's 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 more than even just accessibility like yeah i mean that part is uh is built in and there's an inherent benefit of going with the UX team versus just a standalone designer who may not be as familiar with accessibility um, items. But you mentioned California and uh, Europe. So privacy is also uh, a factor that has to be built into the into the law, into the design uh, and mm -hmm. implementation phases because uh, people want people are getting a lot more strict about their uh, personal data. So if you're looking at like a review form, you need to be very careful about what information you're trying to collect from people because they don't want you to have it. Um, and it's finding that perfect balance. So yeah, accessibility is baked in. And then also there's the uh, kind of evolving personal data protection that's that's also baked in. And can, can we touch just briefly on um, just a few elements of accessibility that are commonly um, helpful to, to an e-commerce website? Um, so 
visually, just, uh, you know, very quick change you can make is just start with your check your fonts and check your colors, check the contrast is okay and usable. The next is to anything that can be interacted with on your website. So it can be, you have clicks, you have hover effects, you have links, let's say you have a carousel or you have a video, make sure that complies with accessibility standards, because I feel this is where a lot of websites fall short. You know, there's no focus states maybe, or it's um, the video is lacking in controls or your images don't have any um, alt alternative text descriptions. Those are a lot of basic elements that it requires a little bit of work to in cha change, but already you you will make a big step to improving the accessibility. Okay. And there are many, many tools on the internet. I think Google even has that you can just run a very quick test uh, accessibility audit and it'll just show you list a whole list of all the issues. Yeah. And one thing that I was just going to mention is that uh, um, in the notes, for these videos, we'll have a section with links to tools that we think might be useful for people who are interested in doing research and user experience or undertaking their own project, um, as well as a link if they want to talk to us about their user experience needs. Um, so what else, what are the other elements of design that, um, you know, we'll undertake for a client? So. In addition, I'll list some activities, but what I want to underline at the beginning is that um, the whole point of that, this stage is really, once we get to the stage where we're actually coding, where our designer is, you know, finalizing the, the layout and the interface and the visual aspects, we don't want to be at that stage thinking, oh, wait, should we have a button here? Oh, wait, where should this link go to? Oh, wait, what should the navigation look like? It's a bit too late for that. And so, the really here, you want to really prepare the foundation for the whole website. You want to make sure all the issues, all the features are decided and defined and the flow is, you know, put in place and we know, okay, so we know that flow is effective and now we're going to make it look great. We're going to code it. We're going to, you know, uh, execute the vision of the client. And so um, all these activities like making personas, making journey maps, creating the user flows, creating the navigation, the information architecture, and conceptualizing the whole website before actually, you know, putting a pen to paper and designing what it will look like. That's for us the main goal, you know, really laying this out so that once we get to the, to the graphic designer, putting those pixels onto the screen, they're not worried about, you know, which heading should be here, what, you know, where the sidebar should be, where the what the filters should look like you know it's already all decided and planned and it, we think that's just it just saves a lot of time and in that phase so it sounds like you're probably involving a variety of stakeholders in this design phase so um even though it sounds like you will be handing something off that's relatively fully baked to be implemented in the next phase um I'm sure that you have some graphic designer or stakeholder who is interacting with you during the design phase so that you're making sure that it, those, those beautiful aspects are also being considered in terms of also the user experience. Is that an accurate way to describe it? I would say we, we hope that we, we always aim towards that. It doesn't always end up like that in practicality, just for logistical reasons. But, um, the ideal situation is that you actually have developers involved as well. They should see how it's going, how it's working behind the scenes, because for them, it just gives them such more, a, a greater context. So when they're working, they already understand how the site should work. And I think that helps a lot. So I actually prefer, prefer when as many, as many different stakeholders are, you know, in the process or at least aware of what's happening. Of course, it's very helpful to have the graphic designer in those early stages because they can also help identify, oh, you know, you want to lay this out like this, well, that's going to be an issue because when it comes down the line, you know, I'm not going to be able to implement that. So um, learning those limitations from all aspects, from coding, from design, from UX, um, can will only make your work better because then, you know, you're saving time, you're working more efficiently. And it, uh, it, I, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Danita, sorry. 
I wanted to point uh, out w one more thing, like feedback is also really important in our uh, process, like Ra Clara mentioned, to have all of these people, but also to get some feedback from graphic designer, from a developer, from a um, business oriented person to uh, make sure that our uh, proposal of our UX is okay and will uh, fit in business and also a needs and user needs, but also uh, wouldn't be too hard to implement because we also need to have this in mind that we have some budget and we can go crazy with some solutions. Sometimes we would, we would like to go uh, crazy, but we know we have some limitations and it's really good to know these limitations at the beginning of the project and process. Yeah, gives you a more, a more holistic view. Yes, exactly. Yeah. To have a really holistic view of uh, this uh, project. What yeah. Danuta mentioned, sorry, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, just to add on to what Danuta said about, um, and uh, Jared earlier, about setting those expectations and also setting, you know, learning from the client what success looks like for them and using that as kind of the marker to reflect back on. So even in the design stage, um, we it's important to keep looking back, like, wait, are we answering those goals we set out to answer? Are we answering those issues we set out to answer? Because it's very easy, even from the for our, from our perspective and from the client perspective, to get sidetracked, to start, you know, loading other features on, to start thinking about other aspects of the website. And so, uh, like we mentioned in the previous section about setting those expectations and defining what success, the success criteria um, is really important to keep us on track. And it, it sounds like all of these elements just continue to re reduce risk. I mean, every, every e-commerce company has a different tolerance for risk. And if e-commerce is really essential to the core of their business operation, their risk tolerance is probably pretty low. So they really need to invest in, for example, just site security. And and it just seems like fully investing in the UX research phase and the design phase so that when you get to the implementation, you've already considered all of those elements. So what you're implementing really ultimately will reduce the risk that what they've designed isn't going to solve their problem like that's the worst case scenario like they they skip out on the research they do minimal design they focus on it being beautiful and they hope that it's going to increase their sales and they implement it and it costs them a fair bit of money even just to do that mm -hmm. and it falls flat and there's no you know like nobody wants that so i think what i'm just reiterating is yeah making the investment in the full process of the user yeah. experience yeah. Um, is really valuable. Right. Well, and we, we have a lot of clients who, well, I mean, any, any client who, who comes to us for regular like site and maintenance, um, you know, they have a long list of, of things that they want to do to their site because they think it's going to help with their goals in some way or another. But, um, you know, when you talk, when you talk about risk for versus budget, um, yeah, you're ultimately reducing your risk because you're saying instead of this list of things that I see my competitors doing or that I think will help my site uh, because it worked for somebody else, you're looking away from other people and you're looking, you know, you're still considering your competitors, but you're looking at your own site and you're making an informed decision um, about why this feature will actually help your site uh, beyond just, well, you know, my competitor does it. Um, so yeah, that's a good point. So um, when we come to the end of the design phase, or kind of wrapping it up, um, what is it that that's actually going to be delivered? What's the format that it's delivered in, and and how do we get to that final final stage of the design phase? Yeah. So it dep depends on the client and their needs. Some clients will want more uh, more materials. So maybe we'll provide them a full report with, you know, customer personas, uh, kind of the, the, pr the product of all our research. So all our research kind of neat, it funnels down to us creating some materials that we can work with. 
This could be a customer journey map, could be a service blueprint, it could be a, a persona, it could just be a summary of the analytics research. But whatever the product of the research is, this is really what we're going to base the the design, the solution phase on. This is how we're going to create those new ideas and concepts. And um, it's as much as the client wants, really. We can give them everything we create, or we can just give them maybe some wireframes. And wireframes are just a more simplistic view of a website to really show them how it, the website should function and how it should work. So it's not really going to give information about the visual aspect or the design, but it's going to give the customer an idea of how the, the, how the end product will work. Okay. And if they want more than just wireframe, let's say they're doing the whole kit and caboodle and they're, they, they got the wireframes and they want to go through and they want something delivered like developer ready um or designer ready you know uh or... yeah then our graphic designers will then go through our wireframes um and we'll talk to them about how it works and they will prepare you know actual you know pixel perfect ready to go designs that a developer can work off maybe our developers will even have a look at it and provide their recommendations their estimations or what tools they should be using for this 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 feature and things like this yeah, we can also create prototype to yeah. test this with users or give to our client to test with their mm -hmm. customers and give us uh, some feedback. And a prototype is just um, a working design that's just not connected to any database. So basically you can click through, you can um, access all the interactions, you can scroll, you can basically interact with the website. It's just not connected to any, to any real information or data. Yeah, so another... Oh, sorry. Another yeah. benefit of uh, having a prototype is that you can test a flow uh, mm -hmm. for some specific yeah. task. And now you've got something that you can hand off to the developers, to the designers in a concrete form that we feel good about. And we're going to move that into what we call the implementation phase. So um, that concludes this segment on the design phase. And our next segment will focus on the implementation and uh, we'll pick up there. For more insights on how to improve your e-commerce website and for a free consultation, visit ironplane.com. Follow us on social media and like and subscribe below.